Okay, so um, chapter three, I'm assuming you've already read it. We're going to do a real quick annotation, just a general annotation. Um, I did talk in class that we were concentrating on how are the pigs differentiating themselves from uh, the other animals. Also, there is a specific example of propaganda being used in this chapter. You need to find it. Um, so look for that example of propaganda. In addition, um, there is some more characterization going on. Um, there are some events um, that are very important that you need to kind of try to uh, identify in this chapter. So let's go ahead and this should be our second reading of the chapter. So looking at the pig specifically, so one thing that we um, should notice right off is that the pigs did not actually work but directed and supervised the others. Um, with their superior knowledge, um, it says they're natural, they should assume the leadership. Um, Boxer and Clover harness themselves, they do the work, um, they continue on and they urge the others to continue to work. Every animal, again, as we continue on, um, Every animal down to the humblest worked at turning the hay and gathering it. Then it goes into a little bit of detail of what exactly they do. And you know what? The animals are very happy that um, they are doing this work because they've never had the control of doing their own work and also getting the amount of food that they need. All right, continuing on. Um, however, they did not, even though they're happy, everything's working smoothly, there were some difficulties. And some of these difficulties um, had to do with when they harvest the corn. They had to tread it out in ancient style and blow away the chafe with, his, with their breath, okay, since the farm possessed no threshing machine. Um, again, Boxer, hard worker, not very smart. But he, again, had the ad admiration of everyone because he worked even harder than he did when under Mr. Jones. Now he's like with three horses rather than just one. Um, it continues to talk about how uh, Boxer is admired. Boxer comes up with his, a maxim, a motto for his own self, and it's, I will work harder. So that is Boxer's motto maxim, okay? And let's go back up here. So this whole paragraph up here talks about description of the work. I may have misspelled that, of animals' work. Then we continue to go down here, characterization. Again, Molly isn't really doing her share. Um, it's all about Molly. She's vain, okay? And then it talks about the cat. Cat member always seems to disappear when there's work to be done. Continues to happen, okay? Molly and the cat equals slackers, okay? They're not doing their fair share. All right. Some more characterization. Old Benjamin, he seems to be unchanged since the rebellion, so he continues. All right, so the work week is like our work week on Sundays, no work, okay? We celebrate with breakfast is an hour later than usual. There is a ceremony with which um, is observed every week at no fail. So see what they do in their ceremony. They raise a flag, and as we continue to read, we um, get a description of the flag and what it stands for, what it symbolizes. So pay close attention there. Um, we also see that the um, pigs hold a general assembly, uh, uh, assembly, which is known as the meeting, okay? And here the work of the coming week is planned out and resolutions put forward and debated. Um, Animals really don't think the re resolutions on their own. Snowball and Napoleon, however, um, are by far the most active in the debates. And it's noticed 
that these two never are in agreement. So here's some conflict. So here's some conflict starting to arise. And we know that the meeting always ends with singing of the Beasts of England, again for motivation and remembrance of where they were before the rebellion. All right, so pay close attention here. Pigs are distinguishing themselves, okay? The pigs um, take the harness room as their headquarters for themselves, separating themselves. In the evening, they study um, blacksmithing and carpentry. They also read additional uh, books that they found in the farmhouse. Snowball has also uh, started organizing the animals into what he calls animal committees. There are varying different committees for the different types of animals. Take a look at that. Are they successful? No, these projects were a failure. Okay. Why? It tells us right here, so read that. Um, the cat joins the re-education, and again, it talks about uh, the cat and the lack of involvement. Um, in this case, he is uh, being involved, but the sparrows kind of question it, like mm, they're still keeping their distance because they don't trust the cat. Um, reading and writing classes, however, for all the animals are uh, successful. Here, it talks about the different animals and exactly how far along they are in their um, reading. Different variances, the dogs learn very quickly. The pigs already read and write perfectly. Okay, Muriel the goat could read somewhat better than the dogs. Okay, Benjamin can read as well as the pigs, but never really showed that. Unfortunately, Clover and Boxer know their ABCs to that extent. Molly refuses to learn anything but the six letters that spell out her name. Again, her vanity is showing. All right, so that's important to know as far as their reading levels and how much they can read versus the pigs. Next, we see a reduction in the seven commandments to just one. Four legs good, two legs bad, with the justification that not everybody can read to the ability of the pigs, so they reduce it to just one. Here, they're saying birds, wings, are legs, okay? So, according to their new little maxim, birds are still in their group. Here's some more about the sheep and what they do. Napoleon took no interest in Snowball's committees. There's the ex second example of conflict between the two of them. Education was for the young. Okay, all the other animals are pretty grown up. Um, so past their point of being able to learn. It's for the young. And if we look here, Napoleon actually takes away the puppies that Jesse and Bluebell had and he separates them. He takes them up the lot where they could reach life little harness. I'm reading that very fast. And they're in seclusion. And then slowly the other animals forget their existence. Here we find the mystery of the milk and the justification for it. And then here we see here is some propaganda. You should annotate what type of propaganda is being used here. Okay, so the pigs have been using the milk, and here they also say, not only do we need the milk, but we need the apples, okay? We need the apples, because if we don't have the apples, we cannot preserve our health without the milk and apples, okay? Because if we don't, do you know what will happen if, if we pigs fail in our duty, according to Squealer? We need to make a point here, some characterization about Squealer as well. Jones would come back if the, if the uh, pigs don't get their apples and their milk. And here is the acceptance as a result of that propaganda of the other animals. 
Okay, so that's the end of chapter three. I know I did it very quickly again, um, but like I said, you should have already read this chapter, and we're j just going in there for a quick annotation afterwards, taking out the most important parts. How are the pigs distinguishing themselves from the other animals? And this type of propaganda, what type of propaganda is this? Okay, we'll talk about that in class.